has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, you can still be glad in what you're doing through. That's right. Because there's that news for you. It ain't going to stop. Yeah. It ain't going to yeah. stop until you hear those words, well done. Right. Why do you think he says, well done? Because you went through it. Yeah. You hung in there. Hopefully. You went through it. And you fought the temptation to fall away from it. Amen? Before we start this morning, Acts chapter 16, there's a, and the Bible we know is full of all kinds of awesome stories, right? So we all know about Paul and Silas. They ministered together and they you rebuked this and rebuked that. And in chapter 16, they're locked up in prison, right? Yeah. Well, if you get to chapter 16, I don't know how far I'll go in this because we have a lot of business to do. We've got work to do. This is kind of my heart this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to share it with you. Chapter 16. Paul and Silas were in prison. You, all read, you can read the story if you want. We won't go into that far. But about midnight, verse 25, Paul and Silas were praying. And don't forget, they're chained to the wall. They're going through stuff, aren't they? Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. I want you to notice two things. First of all, as you read farther up, they were chained, right? They went through stuff together, and they were praying together, and they were singing hymns of worship together, right? And the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. They fell off. Right? And if you read on, you can see where Paul and Silas had never moved. They stayed right there. Who knows what the other prisoners did? Okay. Paul and Silas stayed right there. And go down to verse 29. The guard the that was watching them became worried that everybody left. And he said, verse 29, And he called the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas, and after he brought them out, he said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? I just went through an earthquake. And I came in to check on you. I came in to check on you, and your chains aren't even on you no more. Now, as a soldier, as a guard, his first thought was, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. So what's he do? What do I need to do to be saved? Because it's obvious you have a message. It's obvious that what you've been preaching is for me. What do I need to do to be saved? Response? They said, believe, verse 31, in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Whoa! You and your household. What's that mean? Well, not only you, but you're going to share it with your household and they will also be saved. So when someone asks you, what do I, what do I, I need something that you have. What do I need to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your household. How powerful is that? That is like, that is like the message that we need to have tattooed on our forehead. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and your household. What happens today, folks, is we don't see it happening fast enough in our household. So they will begin to have worry and doubt. Well, if they do the same for them, it's for everyone. That blood of Jesus has, has brought everyone that wants a relationship into relationship, but they first have to believe and ask for the repentance. What does the Bible say about believing? The Bible says the devils be 
believe. And they tremble. It's more than an intellectual sense. It's more than believing in your brain. It's believing in your heart. That's why Jesus says, hey, I'm standing here and I'm knocking. Invite me in and I will cleanse you from all the places. It begins with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your household. Our friend here tonight, been praying for this individual the other night, and Bible class was one of us spoke to this. He said, you can call my name and it will happen. Amen. What does that mean? That means he might have to go through a Damascus road. That means he might have to go through something. Oh, God, what's going on? Yeah. Right? The folks, God's grace and God's mercy is free. That cost you nothing. Except, Lord, forgive. Forgive. So as we enter a time of worship today, I want you to be aware of how you are worshiping not to make yourself look good or sound good, because we all know that everybody in here but her soul probably sounds good. And then, that's a joke. I guess the verses, if I can hear her soul singing. Everybody in here, you, you guys, when I sit up front here, I almost have tears in my eyes, because the combination of everyone singing blesses me, because I know God's going to hand this, listen to well, that's why it's called a joyful noise. Amen. <laughs> God's going, listen. Listen. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we come before you this morning and we say thank you for the opportunity, first and foremost, to believe on our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will show that belief, we will show that enthusiasm for worshiping you. Because you and you alone deserve it. We don't do it for attaboys. We don't do it for, oh man, that guy sounds good. We do it to hear you say, well done. We want to be a sweet aroma in your nostrils. And no matter what we sound like, when we worship, we will always be a sweet noise in your ears. So Father, bless your service. Give us an opportunity to reflect on what you've done for us and what you will continue to do for us. In Jesus' name, I'm going to give you a come against that spirit, a spirit that did not come from God. It comes from a lie of the enemy that says, you're not worthy. Lord, you sent your son to die on the cross that makes us. There is no fear. There is no fear if we walk after your spirit by the leading of your spirit. Sometimes, Lord, we, we have a tendency to look to the left or to the right. And all you want us to do is keep our eyes on you. And when the pit gets deep, you are there with an outstretched hand. And when the rocks get in our way, you are there to carry us over. When we walk through that valley, you are there to carry us through. Sometimes, Lord, we look for the mountaintop too often and forget about the valley that we got to pass through. But, Father, you are with us. You said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said it many, many times that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You won't leave us alone. You will give us the power and the strength that we need. We've already won the war because you won it. You won it. But 
Father, every battle we have in our life, you still have victory in it. Because Jesus went through the grave. Jesus went to the pit of hell. Jesus took the keys of life and death. And he ascended to the Father, where he sits on the right hand of God right now, and he prays. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray you open up our hearts and our ears to hear you. In Jesus' name. Or what agreement has a 
temple of God to idols. So we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, said the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, said the Lord Almighty. You are to separate yourself. Set yourself apart from the world that you live in. Set yourself apart from the things that 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 has bringing you down, you to come out from anything that is contrary to the perfect will of God in your life. That is mission. You have to separate yourself from all the negatives in your life, all the negative things that keep you down from from walking wholeheartedly and separate from God. Sometimes I think as believers, I'm not saying all believers, but I'm not saying this person. So I am saying sometimes believers, they look for that backpack. They look for that animal. They look for that, 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 boy, you're doing a good job. <laughs> My job ain't good if I'm not separated to do what God called us to do. Amen? So we have to be able to separate the positives to give it over to God. The negative is the stuff that you're going through. Give that up. Separate yourself from that. Sometimes it's something as small as music. Sometimes we have to separate ourselves from music, certain kinds of music. We think it's okay. It's all right. But it's not. Is it feeding your spirit? Is it feeding your spirit or is it feeding something else that causes you to think, oh man, that's good, that's exciting, but is it feeding your spirit? It's the same with what you read. Is it feeding your spirit or is it giving you an opportunity to step away from the truth and read what the writer's saying? The same as what you drink. If you're an alcoholic, what business have you got drinking? Whatever. If you have a, an issue with it, if you've had an issue with it, what business have you got enjoying it or trying to enjoy it? Because i got news for you, folks. If you give it up, you will never enjoy it again. You can try, but for some reason, okay, this ain't as good as it used to be. Be careful what you want. You have to separate yourself from what you even want. Well, Pastor, that's true, and I'll never want nothing. Okay. Right? I, I don't need to watch. And you know what, folks? We watch stuff sometimes. It's got little silent messages in it. Yeah. Little silent things that you really don't catch. And the Holy Spirit also says, remember that? Oh, Lord, when did I watch that? Blah, 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 blah. Like I said, many, many times the Word says, there's no one perfect. No, not one. But we still need to be on guard to make sure we are separated from the things of the world. And since we all want to hear it, well done. So, to be separated means to be sanctified or set apart for salvation and service. Once you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're not done. Oh man, I thought my name written down the land of life. Woo, whew, that was close. Now, Go share it. And those of you that know what I'm talking about, when Jesus has moved in, you cannot help but want people to know. You see somebody messing up your first response, and i got to tell that dude. i I, I got to make sure he, he or she understands. Sometimes they don't want nothing to do with it because they're happy or satisfied in their walk. And Jesus says, I don't know you. Get away from me. But we sacrificed to you. We prayed to you. We gave this. We did this. But I don't know. You did it for the wrong reason. You did it so people can see what you're doing. You didn't do it so I can see what you're doing. So I understand what you're doing. You did it so you can say, man, I worshipped to 40 people last week. Really? How many got saved? None. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a seed plant, doesn't it? I agree with that. But it also takes a follow-up. Who's going to be the follow-up? Amen. We're going to be 
separated, sanctified, set apart for salvation and service. The Word of God has the power to separate the believer from sin. Turn with me to John chapter 17. I know there's one there. Amen? 
you always. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, and abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and the soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he will also bring it to pass. Brethren, pray for this. What's he saying? Pray that you can separate yourself enough Pray that you can always pray without ceasing. Give thanks even when you're in the middle of trial. And pray that God will reveal to you why you're doing it, His will. Didn't we just read God's will for you? Pray that God reveals to you why you're going through it and what the outcome might be. Without ceasing. And God will do God, the Son, has the power to separate the believer to righteousness. God, the Son, has the power to separate the believer to righteousness, having no spot or wrinkle. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And I would encourage you to write your scriptures down so if I go too fast, you can ponder them. You know? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5. Page 976. You know, I wouldn't want that. I know people 
people have read the Bible 15, 16 times and still don't understand what it says. Why? It's because the Spirit, they haven't allowed the Spirit to bring revelation into it. We need to stop trying to achieve righteousness because it's already on us. We have to walk in the righteousness that He's given us through the blood of Jesus. But that doesn't mean we go out and throw this false grace around. Like, right? if I can, you know, I'm going to go mess up on purpose because grace, you know, it's not that easy, is it? God, the Holy Spirit, has the power to separate the believer unto salvation and service. God, the Holy Spirit, has the power. Listen, if the Holy Spirit can raise Jesus from the dead, He can fix anything in your life. Right? He can take any fear, any worry, any doubt away. You know what the key is? You've got to be willing and you have to separate yourself from the things that bring you concern. Can you imagine? I'm thinking about what Glenn and Cindy are going through with their dog, the small dog. You know what? That can really wear on you. That can almost go, you know, what am I doing? But as you persevere, even in things that you don't think you can persevere in, God will find a way. Even if it's something as important as you cannot forget it. You keep asking God, God, you're doing this for a reason. What do I need to do? And you know what he says a lot of times? Keep God always has a way to supply. Always has a way to supply. But things that happen in our life and the world can bring us to a point of why in the world am I going through this? I give up. God says, good, now let me work. <laughs> now let me work. The Bible doesn't say be still just so you can repeat it. The Bible says, be still and know. Be still and know. What, what does that mean? Just be still and know. And then let God show you what he means by being still and know. Some people think, well, I'm going to lock myself in the closet and that's it. That's not what he's saying. Now, if God says, go put yourself in the closet and sit for a couple hours, God, I'm there. But we need to understand that we need to wait in his presence. Someone turn to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 real quick. Anybody? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. You got it, Tim? Yeah. Read it. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become wool. That little statement right there has a lot of, a lot of questions answered. Because not only will he take your life that's messed up with darkness and, and, and a dirty uh, apron or whatever it is, but he takes it and he draws it and he cleans it. The same for your life, if you let me. We all have questions. What are you doing, Bob? Be still and know. Because when we try to outthink God, it don't go very well. Does it? God, I need to handle this myself. No, let me do it. All that is part of a, of a life yielded abundantly by separating yourself from the world and the things of the world. Without being separated, you can have a relationship with God, but you cannot have fellowship with Him. Why is that, do you think? If you, if you separate yourself, okay, great. Are you having fellowship with him, or are you just a believer? If you cannot separate yourself from the things of the world, you have to ask yourself, am I in relationship with 
God, or I just, or do I just believe God is who He says? I was talking to someone from two years ago now. I was talking to someone that, how come I don't, how come I don't hear God's voice? How long do you sit in front of me? Well, I've only got a certain amount of minutes. There's something wrong with short prayer, folks. Don't get me wrong. But if you want to have a communication relationship with God, you have to give Him time to speak to you. Amen? The problem is the world's got us so fast paced that we forget about the fact that God wants to speak to each and every one that call upon His name. Sometimes it's through a message, sometimes it's through your own emotions. But you have to have a relationship with God through your separation. But you cannot have fellowship with him unless you separate. Fellowship and relationship are different. How many of you have friends out there that you have a relationship with? You call them, everything's going great, whatever. But do you have fellowship with them? Do you see them all the time and speak about God or whatever the case might be? It's hard sometimes to fathom we can have a relationship with the Creator of the universe and fellowship with that same creator. I don't understand that. How do I have fellowship? By giving yourself the ability for him to speak to you by separating yourself from the things of the world. We have to be able to do that. Now, you might be thinking, well, how, how am I going to do that, Pastor? Get the word in you. The Bible says, put on the mind of Christ. How do you do that? You do that by putting more time into your fellowship than your relationship outside of the world. You need to be able to apply yourself. God, what say you? And sometimes you have to sit long enough until you get your answer. You have to be stubborn. 